Everybody you've talked about you've talked about you've talked about trying to unify the party. How do you bring these Nikki Haley voters, some of whom voted for you in 2020, but say they don't want to now? Oh, they'll how, all do you, vote. how do you bring them back into the town? They're gonna all vote for me again. They're gonna all vote for me again, everybody. And I'm not sure we need too many. He, he Nikki Haley, Nikki Haley won 2.9 million votes in the primary so far. Uh, if those mm -hmm. and our Fox uh, News voter analysis shows that somewhere between five and ten and six and ten of those Nikki Haley voters say they won't vote for Trump in November. If even a fraction of those voters deliver on that promise and stay home or vote third party or just or just you know split their votes or something, Trump loses. <laughs> And what you make, you make the case that he's got a lot of great supporters who are 100% behind him, yep. but he can't win with just them. He needs to get the independents and the Republicans who voted for her during the primary. Okay, sure. Watching Republicans make based ads for Democrats on the House floor is enjoyable, I will admit. Another member of Congress resigned today. So now I'll be told, Chip, we only have a one-seat majority or two-seat majority. I don't even know what it is anymore. Let me ask you a question, does it matter? In 2018, we had the House, we had the Senate, we had the White House, and we had a bigger majority than we have today, and we utterly failed to secure the border. Totally dropped the ball, didn't do it. This place just keeps going downhill, and, and I don't need to spend my time. But have you watched the Fox News guest go completely off script and tell the harsh truth live on air because that is priceless entertainment. 1,254 miles. All right, Texas. we're continuing to monitor this. Uh, just one slight thing I just wanted to add because when you hear it and you heard it from Donald Trump about the 2020 election and it got millions of more votes, in fact, he did get millions of more votes, he still lost uh, that election. That is not in doubt anymore. That's not being debated anymore. Uh, but but I, I, I didn't want to get off topic too much. I do want- After another less than impressive Trump performance this week, as Nikki Haley managed to clinch more than 77,000 votes in Georgia's Republican primary race, despite dropping out the race following Super Tuesday last week, only adding to the already prominent conversation regarding moderate Republicans and their refusal to bow to the MAGA contingent. I'm a former Trump voter. I voted for Donald Trump in 2016 and 2020. In 2020, I voted for Trump again. I will never support Donald Trump. I will not vote for him in 2024. He's got so much baggage. An issue that even the most pro-Trump Fox News hosts have identified as a major hurdle for the Trump camp as we approach November. We see in the uh, uh, in, in these states a third of the vote in Virginia, 43% uh, of the vote in Massachusetts going to Nikki Haley, a quarter of the vote in North Carolina. Uh, Maine has now dropped down to about a quarter of the vote, but it was 31% for Nikki Haley, Vermont 48%. There's still some work to be done to unify the Republican Party, and uh, that's going to depend a lot on his tone tonight and whether or not he stops doing things like calling her bird brain and threatening that if uh, you give money to her campaign, you're going to be permanently banned. Well, first of all, stop the bad language, because you're right. Uh, Ron DeSantis offered him his endorsement. President Trump had uh, kind words to say for him. Then there was a uh, a leaked report of supposedly uh, De DeSantis off the record saying things in a private meeting uh, that were disparaging of the former president. And the president's co-campaign manager, a terrific guy, a personal friend of mine, went out and said, all we're going to remember about uh, Governor DeSantis is chicken fingers and uh, pudding lips. And that's just not the way to go about doing it. J.D. Vance, one of the uh, former president's big surrogates, uh, put out a statement saying, if you are not being supportive of Trump, and his endorse and the candidates he endorses don't bother showing up on my doorstep and asking me to help you on legislation. I have a long memory. Well, that's the kind of thuggish thing that most politicians, even if they believe in keeping enemies list, they don't go out and say it in a tweet. And yet that was one of the president's uh, the former president's uh, strong supporters, uh, the senator, junior senator from Ohio, that, that stuff has got to stop. And this point was hammered home during a segment in which the former Bush speechwriter laid bare how much trouble Trump is in if this trend continues. The, he, Nikki Haley, Nikki Haley won 2.9 million votes in the primary so far. Uh, if those, mm -hmm. and our Fox uh, News voter analysis shows that somewhere between five and 10 and six and 10 of those Nikki Haley voters say they won't vote for Trump in November. If even if fraction of those voters deliver on that promise and stay home or vote third party or just or just you know split their votes or something trump loses up ed in the wapo and uh, the headline is uh, trump needs haley voters who win back the white house and what you make you make the case that he's got a lot of great supporters who are 100 percent behind him yep. but he can't win with just them he needs to get the independents and the republicans who voted for her during the primary 
Yeah, no, 100 percent. Nikki Haley is out of the race, but her voters will probably decide the 2024 election. Uh, you know, they, they are uh, they are the swing voters of 2024. They're a mix of non-MAGA Republicans, mostly with some independents and Democrats mixed in. And they're going to decide this race. I, I went back and looked at all the races so far. Right. And she has exact she won exactly two million eight hundred seventy three thousand four hundred ninety one votes. The 2020 election was decided by forty two thousand nine hundred and eighteen votes in three states. So Trump can't afford to leave any votes on the table. Uh, and th those voters are going to be the most coveted voters in this election right. uh, because they they will. They're the swing voters who will decide the race. And uh, in your op ed, you're right. Many Republicans look at this and say there's no way Joe Biden can win. Yes, he can. And if you don't believe it, I've got three words for you. Senator John Fetterman. Yeah. I mean, you know, the uh, voters in Pennsylvania have shown that if they don't like the alternative, uh, they'll vote for a guy who just had a stroke. <laughs> I mean, you know, you look at we were right. talking, you guys were talking about the debates and whether Joe Biden's going to avoid debates. Jo jo John, Fet remember John Fetterman's debate? And they voted for him. They put him in they office. Did indeed. Uh, you know, if they don't like the alternative. So Trump really has to appeal to those swing voters and make an effort to win, uh, win them over and convince the non-MAGA voters. Our Fox News uh, voter analysis says about two thirds of the electorate, Republican electorate, electorate is MAGA, a third is not. He needs those non-MAGA voters, and he needs to, co to convince them to come to his camp and unite the Republican right. Party. Well, tonight during the State of the Union, he will be live truthing over on Truth Social. Let's see how that goes. Mark, thank you very much for getting up early on this Thursday. And the thing is, if anyone is surprised by this, they're either cocooned off in a thick Newsmax Fox bubble, or they're just willfully ignorant. Well, you know, I mean, I heard that what he said, and he talked about how um, he was a bit vengeful, talking about how I promised I'd never run against him. Um, he also needs to remember that I campaigned for a lot of governors and a lot of House and Senate members, and after we lost all of those elections, that's when we decided to jump in, because we lost in 2018, we lost in 2020, we lost in 2022. I was just in Michigan and since Donald Trump became president in 2016, they lost the governor's mansion, they lost the state house, they lost the state senate. Same thing in Minnesota. I went to Colorado. No Republican has won more than 45 percent statewide since Donald Trump became president. I went to Virginia, the exact same thing. Glenn because ever since Trump won in 2016, the MAGA hat has acted as a mere participation trophy in subsequent elections, losing most elections in which extreme MAGA policies were on the ballot. To a giant L. Let yeah. me do this. Donald Trump lost in 2017, oh, 2018, 2019, 2020, <laughs> 2020, 2022, 2023, and last night. I was in the district the day after uh, Republicans shanked it, to use your term, and I heard from voters that they were very, now these are obviously um, very well-informed voters, right. but they were they were at the polling station, they were voting early, and several of them said to me that they don't uh, want to vote for the Republican because it's clearly impossible to get a solution on the issue of immigration. They said border, uh, the border problem, the immigration issue, uh, the migrant issue in their district was the top issue for them. And that the fact that Republicans killed that bipartisan deal uh, put them over the edge to vote for Tom Swazi. Yet despite this and the warning from Nikki Haley voters, the Trump campaign refused to pivot out of fear that they may upset the malignant narcissist. I mean, just listen to the verbal gymnastics of his press advisor when asked about the effectiveness of his crude language by Fox host Stuart Varney. Okay, uh, I've got a complaint. I know the campaign wants to win over Nikki Haley's voters, but I don't think you do that with name calling, for example. I take issue with Trump's new nickname for California governor, calling him New Scum. I don't think that's a good idea. I object to that kind of language. How about you? Well, I think that what Governor Gavin Newsom has done to the great state, once great state of California, is terrible. You see real oh, scum, me. real are you homeless okay people with bringing all over back, the Excuse streets. me, are you okay? Are you saying it's okay to bring that kind of language to a presidential campaign, new scum? That's okay? I, I think the real problem here, Stu, is the policies of the deranged Democrats from no. Gavin Newsom to Joe Biden that have destroyed American communities across this country. I think your campaign has a problem with language like that. Country. You don't agree with me, but I think your campaign has a problem with language like that.
Well, I don't think voters respectfully agree with you either, Stu. If you look at the resounding really? wins that President Trump has so received across you the you board. You think you've got to win yes. over Haley voters with language like that, do you? You win over moderates Presid and women with wa language like that, really? So if you are looking at these numbers and wondering, well, is Trump HQ really considering a different approach to appeal to Nikki Haley voters? Then I have an answer for you. He continues to call her bird brain, and here's what he had to say recently. Again, I'm not sure we need too many. They say, always trying to demean, well, MAGA really uh, represents 48% of the Republican Party. No, it represents 96% and maybe 100%. We're getting rid of the Romneys of the world. We want to get Romneys and those out. Love this video? Make sure you stay up to date on the latest breaking news and all things Midas by signing up to the Midas Touch newsletter at MidasTouch.com newsletter.